Supreme Magus, Chapter 35, Prizes Not here, not now, Lit inwardly screamed. Until it's over, I will be a sitting duck. He knew that it was impossible to hold back the impurities refining process until he was back home. He had no choice but to offer no resistance, making it as fast and painless as possible. Soon, black ooze started being ex uh, extracted from all his pores and orifices. Lid's eyes and throat were burning from the nasty feeling the impurities inflicted on their way out. Lid felt like a river of bile was coming out of his body. When it finally ended, he was kneeling, hands on the ground. A huge puddle of tar-like substance was below him, tanning the air with its putrid smell. Congratulations on evolving your monocore to deep cyan. Solus voice was full of joy. You also should have lost at least a kilogram or two, judging from how much impurities you expelled this time. I can already feel the quality of your mana flow improving. My meals have never been so tasty. Deep cyan? Left coughed some more impurities that got stuck into his throat. All these years, the hard work, even risking my life against not one but two consecutive magical beasts just for the worst cyan core possible, he couldn't help but feel depressed and frustrated. I'm still below Nana's level, and she was born with that core. If she practiced my breathing technique, there's no telling how strong she would be. She could probably already topple mountains and split seas. With a pulse of dark magic, he banished all the impurities into nothingness. Look at the bright side. Thanks to the breakthrough, you should finally be able curing Tista. Isn't that what you wanted from the beginning? Solus tried to console him the best that she could. At that thought, Lit mood lightened immediately. You are damn right. Sometimes I'm just a self-centered asshole. Sometimes, Solus sarcastically remarked, Okay, fine, most of the times. I let my hunger for power get the best of me. Happy now? Sol giggled. Despite having yet to use invigoration, Lit could already perceive the world around him more vividly than ever. The colors, the smell, the sounds, everything was different. It was like being born again and experiencing the world for the first time. Still feeling lightheaded, he splashed the river cold water on his face trying to regain his focus. Suddenly, Lit could feel a shiver on the back of his head, his neck hair suddenly standing up. Lit abruptly jumped back on his feet, turning around to discover that the rye, the very same rye from two years ago, was silently walking towards him. It had become bigger, its height at the withers reaching 1.6 meters and its red fur had gained shades of white dancing in the sunlight like a wildfire. Just trying the soaring hawk spell almost made Lit faint, so he was forced to cancel it while using Invigorate to regain his strength once again. Yet Lit's mana core was still unstable after the evolution process and therefore unable to assimilate more energy. Damn it! I can only escape on foot. Sniffing his stress and fear, the rice spoke. Fear not, Scorch. I mean no harm. On the contrary, I have come to give you my thanks. It was my duty stopping Irtu and Gerda, but you managed to precede me. It threw a magnificent deer he was carrying on his back at Lid's feet. Both the skin and the antlers were in perfect condition. Aside from a single bite mark on the neck, 
where it had been clearly broken. I notice you human prefer them like this, since after eating the meat, you can exchange the rest for those things you call money. Lee didn't feel much reassured. He decided to keep stalling while he was catching his breath and searching for the best possible escape route. So, you can talk to her. Huh? Why didn't we have this conversation two years ago instead of fighting? Stop eyeing for an escape route. If I really wanted to kill you, I would avoid useless talk and strike when you are at your weakest. I am not arrogant and cruel like Kirtu. I would not make the mistake of underestimating you again. As for your question, it was you that attacked me first. Also, do you know what happens when one of us speaks? Either the humans faints or runs away. In both cases, they come back in numbers, even setting the woods on fire trying to kill us all. The rye growled at the unpleasant memory. It relaxed a bit. Yeah. Humans get scared easily. They think themselves all high and righteous and don't like when someone or something they don't recognize as equal threatens the status quo. By the way, sorry for the sneak attack, but you were big, scary and destroying something really precious to me. A light of understanding lit in the rice eyes. You mean that annoying rock that now you were at your finger? I see. Then it's my turn to apologize for damaging your property and trying to kick you out of the woods. I only wanted the noise to stop and you cheesing, seizing your attack. If I have to believe your words, why do you call me scourge? Isn't that kind of offensive? Lit kept moving very slowly towards the fastest way home, one step at a time, like he was just shifting his weight from one foot to another while chatting. The rye snorted, pretending not to notice it. It's no offense, you killed the king in the west and with its life, you claim its title as well. That would make you the king of in the east, I suppose. What's your title? Lit moved another step. The protector. My role is to keep both humans and an unruly magic beast at bay. It has a much better ring than mine. By the way, your majesty, I'm not interested in knightship, kingship, or messing with your turf. Feel free to take over Irtus region or whatever it's called. I only hunt for my survival, not for sport or pleasure. And that's why you are still alive. Seeing that the human was too self-conscious about his weakened state, the rat gave up and turned back, walking towards the woods. Lit was still scared, yet had the presence of mind to stir the deer in the pocket dimension. As soon as the magical beast disappeared from its sight, Lit ran out of the woods, always making Solus look out for any possible menace. On south side, he changed into his usual clothing, dimming the claw rip on the chest, too unsettling for his parents. The closest he got home, the weaker he felt. The adrenaline rush was fading away. His body and mind were both battered from all that what had happened. A splitting headache arose, making it difficult for him to think. When Lit finally arrived at the destination, he was too tired to speak or even walk on to his bedroom. He sat down onto the nearest chair, singing in relief, allowing himself to relax. The next thing he knew was that someone had put him into bed, and judging from the lightning, it was already night. He closed his eyes, pondering about Tista and Eliza were still asleep. He decided to get up and prepare the breakfast for everyone.
following his normal routine. It was in that moment that he realized how much had he changed overnight. Not only his body was brimming with strength, he could also perceive his own mana flow without the assistance of any breathing technique. Lid needed but a thought to start floating, managing to get out of the bedroom without making the wood creak. What had required so much focus just the day before now barely needed his attention. If a tier one spell has become so easy, what about your magic? Lit discovered that now he was able to use up to six spells at once without the use of any gesture or magic word to help coordinate them. Soon, many small vortexes were cleaning every nook and cranny of the dining room, the air in the room getting warmer by the second, while plates and cutlery floated in their place. By the time the table was laid, he had also finished washing and drying the floor. I have performed in less than a minute what usually took me half an hour. I have still a lot of time before having to wake everyone up. Solus, how do you feel? Now that I know you are alright, just bitchy. But since you were referring to my abilities instead of my feelings... From the tone she was quite pissed off. Both the Soluspedia and the pocket dimension have been started expanding since your mana core stabilized. And what about you? Thanks for asking. Without any subtle hint from my side, the sarcasm was palpable. I'm still recovering from the huge scare you gave me yesterday, but I'll leave. Sorry, I know you wanted me to escape from here too and not take unnecessary risks. But I couldn't run away and live in fear waiting for him to find and attack my family. I have lived too long in terror of my father back on earth to let the same thing happen again. I hope you can understand. One thing, nothing more than a Change the subject to escape the awkward silence, Lit asked. What about Gerda's carcass? Can we take credit for the kill or would it arise suspicions? There is no problem for Gerda. History is full of promising mages, even younger than you, killing a magical beast. Since there's no way to determine how strong it was, you can say that you ambush it successfully. Ear too. On the other side is more problematic. Not only his pelt is useless, making him only good for racking up merits, but its corpse shows signs of a spell that should be around tier 4 or 5, if not above. I'd say to save it for rainy days. After deciding what to do with the various carcasses, Lit used the remaining time to practice accumulation, while thinking about how to announce to his parents the treatment he had devised for Tista. Among all the things he had gained since arriving in the new world, his family happiness was still the greatest prize he could strive for.